Marcus Burnett joined by the man with the plan, J.L. Hemingway, as we tip off the second game here of the upper class girls division here from uh, Wilson Central High School in Lebanon, Tennessee. Hemi, we're already underway with game two, rolling along. Games just keep getting better. Without a doubt, we've got a special treat on our hands right here. We got Lily Carter, 212 there in black. Uh, one of the top 10 prospects in the country. Uh, has already given her verbal commitment to Vanderbilt University. Uh, and also uh, just led her team to the Elite Eight, uh, the Murphy Center with Dixon County uh, High School. Uh, so good opportunity right here for, for us to, to watch Lee Lee firsthand. As SUV TV is no stranger to her just from the archive, some of the Team Tennessee Springer games and always a treat. There we see that jumper knocked down by number 106. Hope Henson right there with uh, the nice jumper, and that's what she can do. Boy, she can really shoot the basketball when she gets her feet set. Seen some really good shooting here, even though we're uh, just into the second game. You got, we got Hope, Hope Henson in this one. Paige Pipkin was lighting it up there in the first game. Nearly a steal. They're trying to get it inside. Instead, turning the corner, taking it all the way. A little too strong there on the layup there. That was number 51. As Mary Triplett right there, the lefty. Making her return back to the Coach Hemi Showcase. Triplett always crafty and effective uh, here at the Showcase and beyond. Thought about the three, instead puts it on the floor. Just short, second attempt, gonna earn her a trip to the free throw line. It's Emmeline Payne. Yeah, Emmeline Payne right there, another local kid uh, that plays with uh, the, the B Wright group. 2017. Kid, good skill, you know, in, in several ways reminds me of uh, Anna Jones, you know, from the previous uh, game that we were talking about. Good size, skill, uh, heady kid. Triplet has it up top. Nice step initially on the drop off. Fighting there inside. Nice job of creating that opportunity there by number 91, Jada Roper. It's my first chance watching Jada Roper. Coach uh, Christian Simmons has talked a lot about Roper, you know, coming out of the Memphis area, uh, just how good she has been. You see that, uh, that quick burst uh, to the rim. She can definitely make plays off the bounce. Yeah, that's an understatement. And here she is now. She kicks it to the corner. Triplet, the southpaw. In and out on the three-pointer. Nice work, the helmet and lunch pail bucket on the inside, number 196. Triplet with the rebound. That three-pointer off the mark. Carter just off the mark there. Here's Roper coming the other way. Kicks it over to Triplett, calls for it, shoots, swish. That's a good basketball play right there. Roper getting right into the heart of the lane, finding the open shooter, and Triplett does what she does best, hitting that open jumper. Back the other way here. Another three-pointer on the way. Long rebound. Opting to let it go out of bounds there. It was number 79. That's uh, uh, Raven Gilbert. Looking to 
looking to make a move there. Kiss off the glass, won't go. Rebound pulled out of there. Nice defense there. Pass a little too tall. They chase it down in the corner. Retain possession. Like the on-ball defense there by number 210 so far. 210 is Brandy Furby. Another Team B right kid. And have a trip to the free throw line here for number 43, Jayla Hemingway. Hemingway, just an eighth grader playing up here with this upper division. Uh, can definitely stand our own. We got our first opportunity to look at uh, Jayla last year at the CoachHemi.com showcase. Big wing. Uh, you're going to hear start hearing a lot more about Jayla in the future if you haven't already. Uh, a lot of uh, schools from around the nation are already peeking in on Jayla, uh, watching you know, how she's developing. She'll kick it back out top. That three-pointer off the mark there by Furby. Long rebound. Chase down. Hemingway going to try. I believe that's a deep two. It bounces around. Won't go down. Stays active. Can't get that shot to go. A little bit of razzle-dazzle there. Shot just short. That's Tyra Johnson, 112 in white. An elite 60 prospect uh, in her class, in the class of 2016. Uh, she burst upon the scene last year at uh, our spring showcase. Uh, she's back at it. And uh, definitely one of the more heavily recruited point guards uh, in her class regionally. Not hard at all to see why I can remember that coming out party uh, back at the spring showcase last year uh, over at Riverdale. And it was it was a coming out party, it was an understatement. Except that free throw is knocked down by number 103, that's Kayla Taylor. Deep three pointer there. Number 79 with the long three. And that's Averon, or Raven Gilbert, excuse me, as I should say. Knocked down that one from the highway. She'll get a breather. Roper trying to get it inside. Shots off the mark. Lee Lee Carter going to pull it out of there. Rebound by Roper. Hope Henson, she's already got one three-pointer. Give her her second of the first half. Roper really likes playing with these shooters, I can tell. She found triplet, triplet earlier, and now she's found Henson. Going to have a foul there on the play. A lot of activity going on on the inside, really around the court for Makia Dowdell, number 182 there in the white jersey who was just fouled. She's been very active on the inside. Roper gonna try a three-pointer of her own off the mark. Good shot fake right there. Got the defense up in the air. Mc, or excuse me, Makia Dowdell uh, was able to do it. Now she's gonna get to the go to the free throw line to shoot one. Very hard to keep uh, both her and number 186 off of the boards uh, at the same time. As they both have been relentless there on both ends, 186 Emma Bianchi.
Triplet gets it ahead. I right, try to work it into Henson. Henson in a little bit of trouble, gets Ooh. rid of it. Those situations always make nervous, make me nervous when I see a defender kind of roll up on, on the knee like that. Yeah, very glad off. Ended well there on that particular play. Dowdo off the mark on that three-pointer. Rebounds pulled out of there in a hurry. Tried to drop it off, but that's number 60, uh, Ashley Chu, getting her uh, first opportunity here at the showcase. And uh, Chu, a talented kid, all district uh, player this year, really shot the ball well in the high school season. She's trying to make some plays, just hadn't put it all together as of, as of uh, yet here in this first half. But uh, no worries, that's why you play two halves. Amy, you talked about Lily Carter who just tossed the ball in there. Obviously, her reputation precedes her, but one of the things about her, you talk about players that come out and try to, you know, they're only about scoring or they're only about necessarily hogging the ball. She is the exact opposite despite all of the talent that she possesses. Elaborate on that. Yeah, one. without a doubt, she really likes to pass and, and set up her teammates, you know, more than, more than anything. Now, she's got all the moves in her repertoire to be able to, you know, be one of those great one-on-one -on -one players, but uh, uh, she's a great facilitator of the uh, of the basketball. And good drive down the middle there, and uh, finish there for Team Black. It was number 95. We have some substitutions. Yeah, inbounded there along the baseline. Yeah, number 95 in black. That was Emily Evans out of South Haven High School. Here's Johnson. Johnson has it stripped away. Nice defense being played by Team Black there. Pass is dropped off and Ooh. finished. And she finished that with the left hand on the right side. Nice work there. I believe that was Hemingway on the finish. Yeah, it was. And uh, it's a, that's a tough finish, being able to run full speed right there. So Hemingway on the finish. Brandy Furby on the assist. Nice looking play there. Ball lost temporarily, able to bring it back in. Turnover created. Furby with the steal. She's been a common thread in some positive plays over the past couple possessions. Deep range three-pointers off the mark. Hemingway shows the ball, kicks it out to Furby. Furby for three. Johnson with the rebound. That baseline jumper is too strong. Ball out of bounds. It will stay with the team there in the white jerseys. As we approach the two minute mark, two minutes and count, two minutes and counting. Johnson with it. Gonna try the three pointer. That one's off the mark. Johnson being guarded right now by number 79. He's done a pretty good job defensively. We got a steal again. Brandy Furby wreaking havoc on the defensive end, translating it into offense. work on the glass pays off with that deuce. Hemingway gonna try a three-pointer, money in the bank. 
You know, if there was an area coming out of uh, last spring that we wanted to see Hemingway develop, it was definitely that, that jumper. And as she showed right there, she's been putting some work in into the gym. I know she works uh, regularly with uh, Coach Christian Simmons and uh, start talking about a kid her size that can drive and get to the rim. She can knock down that jumper. She's going to be pretty close to impossible to be able to defend as you see her take the bump right there and get the three-point play. That contact secondary. Uh, when you look at the power she explodes to the rack with, able to get that one easily. Kick it out to the corner, baseline drive. Nowhere to go, nice defense there by Furby. Furby has been able to score the ball a couple times over the past couple minutes, but she's really shown you some of what you talked about, being able to affect the game without necessarily having to score as we go to halftime. Appreciate you joining us here at the CoachHemi.com Showcase as we look back at Jada Roper. She loves to stir the drink, so to speak. Here she kicks it out to Hope Henson for Henson's second three-pointer there of the first half. We'll be back after halftime here at the CoachHemi.com Showcase. And welcome back here. We're ready to get the second half rolling. Team three versus team four. Marcus Burnett. I've got Kyle Morrill on the wing. I feel like I'm in a pretty good spot. Something like Chris Paul with DeAndre Jordan rolling around. I just got to lob it up. I know you'll finish it from there. As Lee Lee Carter pushes the assist ahead and is finished on the inside there by number 81. Yeah, nice finish there. A little floater over the rim. Obviously, Lily Carter, as you saw in the first half, a heck of a basketball player, headed to Vanderbilt. One more year of high school, only a junior, but already committed. Ooh. Got the deflection there. Got to see Lily Carter play a good bit uh, two summers ago with the USA team and you know, did a great job with them. And, you know, expect her to be in that pipeline again as Jada Roper gets a steal here. You no, know, Marcus Roper's a kid that uh, as she makes a nice pass inside. Uh, Roper's a kid that her, her recruiting really doesn't reflect her skill set right now. But I look for her to have a big summer um, and, and garner a lot of interest. I, I that's one of the kids I think with a strong April could be one of the higher, you know, the true stock risers. Ooh, great move. Roper's number 91 uh, there in the white jerseys. A player that we really see be, be able to set the table for other players yes, here in yes, this game. Yes. Really with ease, Kyle. Yeah, you know, the one thing she's lacking right now is a true knockdown jumper. I think at the next level, she's a kid that, you know, a lot of times they'll, they'll play soft on ball screens and maybe go under or, or trap her and make her make a, a decision, but they're not going to kind of hedge and go over and do that ideal thing where it opens stuff up on the backside until she proves she can knock down that jumper consistently. But, you know, the, the 2016 point guard stock class is, is really thin, and she's definitely one of the better uncommitted guards in the country. Again, Roper out of the, 
out of the Memphis, Tennessee area. They be Carter putting the ball on the floor. And Kyle, for those that, you know, for as far as high school girls basketball is, is concerned, have been under a rock. Give them your best nutshell summary as far as Lee Lee Carter, if you're seeing her play for the first time. Um, you know, if, if you haven't seen Lee Lee Carter play and you're familiar with the, the guys game, think Tyreek Evans. You know, really tough off the bounce, great, you know, elite size, elite athleticism. Not a huge jump shooter. Um, most of her game is headed towards the rim. We've seen her post up a little bit here. You know, she needs to get things as far as scoring-wise headed towards the rim, but can handle the ball, can play some point, can create offense for others, can create offense for herself, um, can guard three positions at the college level. I think the one thing for her to really, really get to that next step as far as being an elite prospect is she's got to be able to knock down at least a pull-up jumper when she gets to about 15 feet. Um, she's a good athlete. She's not a Diamond to Shields athlete where she can elevate over post players at the next level. I think a lot of times when you look at, and you've seen her on a USA basketball level, I've mainly seen her here, uh, you know, playing with Team Tennessee Springer there at the Peach State Circuit, uh, Peach State Basketball Circuit of Events. At times, it, it seems like you might want an athlete to be more selfish than they might be on the court, as far as some spectators. Yeah, yeah. I think she does a good job of just always playing her game, but how do you feel like that balance will weigh in on the college level? No, I think it's interesting, like you say that, that's the knock on her, is that she's not a big, big score. Um, you know, she's a kid, she's a stat sheet stuffer. She's a kid that's gonna end up with 11, eight, and six. And there's nothing wrong with that, if that's yeah. who you are. And I think, you, know, you look, talk about people like Lamar Odom, and you know, people like Paul George before he became a big, you know, he kind of became a big score. When he first got in the league, he was more of a, you know, triple-double flirter. Um, there's nothing wrong with, with, with that at all, I think going to where she's going at the college level, there are going to be nights where they need offense, and you look at the best player and you're saying, well, she's only got 11, but um, you know, that's her game. She's yeah. a kid that's going to be able to do a bunch of different things. She's going to get four steals. She's going to get deflection. She's going to do stuff on the defensive end that might not even show up in the stat sheet, but is as vitally important as you know, an elite scorer. Um, you know, I, I always talk about to be an elite scorer at at any level, you've got to be able to hit six to eight jump shots in a game. You know, there's kids that can, there's a bunch of kids that can get to the bucket. There's a bunch of guys that can get to the rim and finish inside. Um, there's even kids that, that can make open threes, you know, here and there. But to make six to eight pull up jumpers, six to eight shots off the bounce consistently every night, I can do that. I can get, I can get us tough buckets. Um, if you can't do that, you're not an elite scorer. And I, I, you know, I think for Carter, that's the next step is if she can add that pull-up jumper, if she can add that, that three ball over time, she can get become that kid that sometimes people want her to be. But there's nothing wrong with what she does right now. Yeah. Great assessment there, that, uh, that travel called against number 61, Trinity Farmer. It was Farmer that scored uh, the previous bucket on the possession right before that. Nice defense there by Hemingway. She's been very active. Spin move and the finish. This is this is uh, my first real, real look at Hemingway, and she's a lot stronger than she looks on film. Um, doesn't explode as an athlete, but she's got great frame, and she's strong, and she's skilled. Can handle the ball, can shoot it. Um, it's a middle school prospect. She definitely, she does some things that I really like. Reminds me, reminds me a little bit of uh, Rike Ogunbowale is going to Notre Dame at the same age. Got to see her as a seventh and eighth grader a lot. Probably saw that kid play 30 games before she got to high school. And they're, they're very similar. And Arike has had a storied high school career. Just had 45 points in the state semifinal the other night. Um, headed to Notre Dame next year to play for Muffin McGraw. And I see a lot of that in Jayla Hemingway. Yeah, contact just hasn't really seemed to phase her at all. All this meant for no, her is just no. they add a point to the deuce he's already getting. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and all these kids are older than her. Tyra Johnson ahead. You, you know, you look at Johnson. We talked about you know sort of a coming out party for her last year's spring showcase. And I think with her, we're kind of seeing the gift and the curse of having the, those handles and having that ability to play. It, it can create opportunities, but it can also make you a little one-dimensional at times. 
your thoughts on her kind of turning that corner and taking that next step of development? Yeah, I think Tyra is in an, an interesting situation given that she doesn't play against elite competition through during the high school season. And so the game is a little bit easier for her in high school than it is here and sometimes in summer basketball. And the hardest position to learn on the floor is the point guard position. How, you know, when to create, like you're talking about, when to create for others, when to create for yourself. You know, I can make threes off the bounce, but is this a consistent shot that I should take in the flow of an offense? Or should I drive it and try to drive to create shots for others or, or myself towards the rim? Um, you know, she's in that position where she's going to have tricks in her bag and things that she can do on the floor that maybe she shouldn't do on the, on the regular basis or show on the regular basis because they're not the high percentage basketball play. Yeah. And for a 15, 16 year old kid to figure that out, it, it, you know, what's that medium? When should I be aggressive here? When should I be aggressive there? It can be. You know, it, it takes NBA point guards a long time to figure that out. That last bucket was scored by number 53, Ali Mayu, uh, there on the uh, the team white side. A nice finish there in the lane. Johnson reminds me a lot of um, Chauncey Billups' his first five or six years in the NBA. Trying to figure out how to play the position, trying to figure out I can score as a point guard, but when is the right time to score? And he didn't really start to get it until he got so he started playing in Detroit for Larry Brown, a coach that knew how to develop him as a scoring point guard. So she's, as Lily Carter gets a steal and is a transition. But Johnson is too talented of a kid to just make a distributor and take her offense out of her. But yeah. how does she use both of those? That's a great example because when you think of Chauncey Billis, if you didn't know that backstory on how he first was when he came into the league, you would never think that he was that type of player. Right. Because, you know, right. he's always the guy that, you know, Mr. Big Shot that always makes the right decision seemingly. Right. So that's a, that's a great example. It'll be interesting to see uh, Johnson's development as that story is to be continued. And I honestly think Johnson's a kid that where she goes to school and the type of coach she plays for is going to greatly have a, have a huge impact on her career and how successful she is at the next level. She's got to play for somebody who's going to teach her but allow her to make some mistakes while she's learning. Lee Lee Carter with the ball. She'll kick it up top. Three-pointer on the way. That one off the mark. And we'll go back over to Team White. Roper looking ahead. Hey, same thing. Same thing. A little bit of miscommunication there on that part. Roper takes some responsibility, but just, just like her presence out there on the floor as far yes. as directing traffic, yes. getting people in the right spots, very good moxie out there. Yes, yes. I mean, I think Jay, if Jada Roper can continue to play like this in the, through the next four or five weeks into the spring evaluation period, um, her mailbox about late April, early May will be stuffed. <laughs> stuffed with letters and, and interest from, from people all over the country. There's uh, a shortage of point guards in college basketball, and that's a true point guard right there. Triplet kicks it out. Hope Henson gets it over to Roper. Roper, jumper a little strong. Triplet just corrals in the long rebound. You see her vision right there. It's a great pass right there inside. Definitely case in point right there. Carter brings it the other way. Can't get the home bounce, but times it and gets the tip in. And right there, that's when Lily Carter's at her best in transition, when she can make decisions with the ball. You know, I, I think Lily's a kid that will play a lot on the ball for Vanderbilt and be more of a setup than a finisher. Um, you know, Vanderbilt will have a ton of weapons when she gets there. Uh, Rebecca Dahlman will still be there. Paris Key will still be there. So there's going to be a ton of quality basketball players for her to play with during her career at, the, uh, at, at Vandy. Long rebound chase down there, and the giant killer floater knocked down by Taylor Manning. Manning guarding Roper. Roper over to Henson, that's a lot of room. Henson can't knock it down. Three 
three-pointers off. Manning with the long rebound, creating another opportunity. Two for a dollar sell on threes. Still unable to cash in. Good work on the inside by Emmeline Payne. We'll have another batch of subs on both ends as we approach the final three minutes of this one. Payne at the free throw line. I'll tell you what, a player we haven't talked about as much but has done some good things in this game. It's been number 210, Brandy Furby. Uh, she's going to come check in right now. She's really been able to mix it up on both ends. She's done some things uh, aside from scoring the ball, just defensively turning defense into offense, just the little things. It's been fun watching her play here this game. Yeah, she's an athletic guard. Um, you know, good feel for the game. You know, doesn't necessarily need the ball to play with energy. You know, I think a lot of times you find kids that they're not touching the ball and they're not getting quality, quality shot attempts that their energy fades and you know, they can't make, they can't impact the game in other ways. Um, you know, Furby has been noticing a lot of times it's not even for plays you know, that are scoring the ball. She's been able to get deflections and rotate on defense and stuff like that. Nice little mid-range J splash there by number 76, Gabby Moore. Hemingway has it, gets it back out top. Nice feed on the inside. Weight room move, fouled on the play. That's gonna send number 119 to the free throw line. It's a good post feed there from an eighth grader showing her feel for the game. Left hand post of entry pass. It's a, a nice, nice little display of skill. Got it inside to Shelby Hicks. Hicks couldn't connect on the free throw. Hemingway, that pass intended there for Furby. Johnson gets the steal, the pass ahead. Too strong on the layup attempt. That was a, a nice pass there by Wrong clock. Good, good awareness, sort of. That was the, <laughs> the rarely seen but often talked about half court heave for no reason. <laughs> so I'm going to get over half court, and if I'm open, I'm letting it fly. That was a Raven Gilbert. She had saw this, the clock coming to zeros on the other court as opposed to this one. Hence that particular heave. There's Gabby Moore. She's going to be fouled there by Gilbert. Three pointer off the mark. Rebound inside by Taylor. Tipped out to Gilbert. Gilbert Whoa. spins. I would like to see her just pull up with that one. Get that little nice little eight foot jumper. Two on one, maybe even pull it out. Or one on two, I should say. Five seconds left. See if Tyra takes a quick one. And so that is going to do it uh, for that one as we take a look back at one of the uh, one of the nicer plays here. Jayla Hemingway rumbling, stumbling, bumbling, the spin move gets it to go off the window. She's a handful. Is she even in high school yet, Kyle? Nope, eighth grader. We'll be back here at the CoachHemi.com Showcase after this short break. <laughs> 